So, hello. First of all, whenever you organize a conference, don't talk. Uh, I knew this before, uh, but there's so much to do that uh, you have hardly time to prepare your slides. And then you, see, you don't see your speaker notes. So, uh, who am I? I'm Anne. I'm coding data stuff professionally since a long time. Uh, I switched to Python 2 in 2000. So, to just I still remember how this is. So, when people come and say, oh, Python 2 is the standard, it was similar back then. Of course, now I'm Python 3 only. Um, I work at Bubble. This is a um, language learning company, so fast-growing startup, lots of uh, data stuff. We also learned a lot. So we have at uh, this conference already heard about data pipelines. It sounds pretty easy. Yeah, you have. Uh, it starts always the same. You learn something at the conference, have a nice analysis task, and uh, you want to do it, and it's. Mostly, yeah, he's get the data, transform the data, process data, write it to somewhere, so one, two, three. And everything works nice until you add other stuff. Because every single talk you have or every single analysis is just uh, one part and it gets more. If you, um, this is so nice, but it, you have more and more and cannot throw the other things away very often, at least in production environments. And I'm talking about those businesses. Yeah, If you're uh, doing it for fun or for a single project, you might not need this. But in reality, uh, every other week something new gets added and the others, uh, the old stuff does not really get uh, thrown away. <coughs> we have seen... Um, um, data pipeline tools, so I have to get into it. <coughs> and then, first, uh, normally people start with, uh, uh, first you run it by hand. Yeah? First this, by this, uh, this. Then you're uh, tired of uh, running it every day, because then if people like it, they want it every day, or every hour, or every minute, and then you set up a cron task to call your pipeline, and then uh, this is so successful that your company grows, or your, uh, your uh, community grows, and it doesn't fit on one machine anymore. Then you have to run multiple machines that are executing all those tasks. and um, <coughs> Pipelines, pipelines, pipelines. Put an empty slide is good as well. And then you get those, this dependency hell. Yeah? It's all the time. I need to intact. The because it's um, often as you have those queues, as it's very easy if you have uh, the case that uh, you want to do one thing after the other. <coughs> if uh, for small data this might work, but uh, very <coughs> often you can do also things in parallel, but have to wait that uh, they have all completed. I always uh, take the example of the exchange rates and uh, the sales numbers. You get uh, uh, sales from everywhere in the world, and uh, then you have to deliver the euro revenue. You, know, you could do exchange rate, sales, one after the other, calculate the revenue in euro. Um, but you should never, it, and since the, the, those uh, tasks are independent from each other, when said, oh, we're pulling sales here, another task can pull the exchange rate, um, you can never calculate the revenue when you don't have the exchange rates. You should be sure you have, because otherwise you have either wrong, you deliver wrong results, which you should not do, or no results, which is better than wrong results, but you want to uh, somehow tackle this. In reality, as this is where then all this ends. Yeah? You add your stuff, you run it, you run it by hand, and um, I come to this. Sooner or later, if you're good, this is just a small part It's uh, uh, from reality, it ends in uh, spaghetti code. You have 
this analysis here, pull data from there, integrate this, uh, check if this is working, uh, create those reports. And <coughs> to make uh, life not even easier to survive this, because uh, it comes really once, uh, so every week uh, something uh, will be added, happen, or even change. <coughs> you should try to, or at least this is what I try to, uh, change my spaghetti code, or our spaghetti code, into something handleable, since spaghetti seem to be unavoidable. Uh, we uh, accept that, but tackle how to do this. So, some tips. Whenever you handle data, also, and I'm more on the, the data engineering part, so I switch to this, because when you run all your analysis, crap in, crap out. If you uh, don't get reliable data uh, from whoever, then who knows what your fine models and so on really say. You need good data, and in reality, there is no good data. Or if your data is good today, if you want to repeat it tomorrow, it might work tomorrow, but then something changes. And Google changes the Google Play order ID from int to string, and uh, everything changes all the time. <coughs> so, whatever you <coughs> tackle in also I'm t here now I'm talking, sorry, I'm talking about those uh, data pipeline uh, chunks, also split it up into those single functions, as in those uh, pipelines, and uh, <coughs> make everything of this rerunnable. Also as aim for item potency. This uh, is not always possible, but you can try to. Also for example, never uh, do something, oh, I have a function, classical, uh, get the date of today. Also get, write it inside your function, get today's date, and uh, then do the download exchange rates from EZB. This is the opposite of an item potent function. Whenever you run it, it delivers uh, different results. Uh, write one will say, okay, I pass in the date. <coughs> and uh, this is an uh, input. And if I uh, run it again and again with the same date and the same date, then I get always the same result. Oop. So now it took... It is not always uh, possible, but really uh, try. Because the advantage of this is uh, massive, as I uh, will show you later. Next, make your data pipeline parts I yeah, thought so called of transactional, so that every single uh, step or chunk in this pipeline is either a failure, a total failure, or a success. <coughs> Don't, you could of course, and yeah, this got wrong, and it was almost done, and uh, the thing that it was n what that we could not tackle um, is it doesn't really matter. Uh, don't start with this, this is unmaintainable. Um, there is a success, gives a result back, it says okay or some result, uh, or it may time out, which is also a total failure. Yeah? But it's a failure, but you can also, if you wait for failures, it might by happen that uh, your uh, function is just not running anymore, and then you can wait forever as well. So I would also definitely wait, uh, uh, pay attention to timeouts with our failures. But nothing else. No, no, not more spaghetti. Keep, keep things uh, simple. <coughs> this um, high degree of replacement independence, um, so by keeping things item potent and uh, uh, totally <coughs> disconnected from uh, other parts of the pipeline, as the reusage, uh, why 
is this important? <coughs> because you have so many uh, little parts, and they're also not a super cool this thing is falling off. <gasps> Stuff changes with the Hemi. So, <coughs> what is the uh, uh, worst when you're, you're writing code is refactoring. And because um, all what you, you, you did your stuff, Everything works. You have those nice item potent uh, things in your uh, uh, pipeline that pull leads and sales and exchange rate and place everything uh, to the reports that uh, your market team, team wants. But then something changes and uh, you don't want to rewrite the whole system. And this dependency hell uh, is only handleable if you, uh, I think, if you can just uh, say, okay, we take this part out, and if we this, uh, just take another one in, we don't need to change all the other part. This is valid for any code, but it's especially uh, valid for data, because we have to handle all the past as well, normally. Uh, uh, normal apps are just there for, okay, serve a, a good app that, uh, handles the now how it is, there's only one state they need to think of, often in data or data warehousing and data engineering. Ooh, you have to store those terrible data lake or if you change some report or uh, this and there. Um, there was this thing in 2010 that people still want to look at and so on. <coughs> it never ends, so it gets worse and worse. And this is why you want to keep your stuff really hell of decoupled. One thing that uh, many people like to forget, especially when they begin, is traceability. Uh, I call for debuggers and auditors. And again, if you run this, this data analysis and storing and cleaning and blah, blah, blah in a successful company, sooner or later they are there. And they want to know how was this decision made, who has access to this. Um, that's not fun, but uh, it uh, happens. And actually, the, this uh, never break the audit trail is very good for understanding what your stuff does as well. So I put debuggers first. And um, the traceability, we say, OK, if, if this is only businesses, it could be also <coughs> Many people uh, nowadays work with uh, pub subsystems, so they just put everything to, to a message queue and you can uh, subs uh, then your uh, uh, pipeline chunks just subscribe to uh, topics. And this is uh, so the decoupling works uh, good in the upstream, uh, in the downstream there, but in the upstream, uh, you cannot, if you have, for example, several sensors sending the same data, uh, you must rewrite all this stuff as well uh, when you want to change it uh, if you need to identify from which uh, sensor was the data coming from. So traceability is really not only for auditors. Um, <coughs> it is, uh, if you later want to say, ah, this is how um, this report or this data set or this result or blah, blah, blah. This is how I got here. Uh, <coughs> then you need to invest some extra work. But it's good to have, because it will save you lots of trouble if you say, oh, I don't know. Scalable, as we've seen some uh, of those uh, data pipeline uh, solutions, and um, <coughs> I can really recommend it must run uh, on more than one machine. So decoupling is no problem, and I have my cluster, and uh, all this uh, <coughs> doesn't uh, is not a problem anymore uh, nowadays. I'm not totally uh, sure if this is true. That's no problem, but uh, 
think of it. One point is also when it's scalable, always take care that you chunk your data, always. Because today I think, oh, this is only a, a million rows. Who cares? I don't need to chunk. Today it works. In two weeks it works. And then when you're on vacation, the North Sea, when your phone rings and you don't hear them, something is wrong. Yeah, too much data. When you're in the North Sea and your phone rings and they call you because something is wrong, what is the best way to keep in vacation? GitHub. Uh, so I had this and when you can't talk to them and imagine many those of those data engineers of workflow have those click, click, click tools. They call them click ops. Yeah? They have... Um, <coughs> they this is really, really common because often when you design those data pipelines, those ETL designers and so on, you click, click, click from here to there and clean it. And it all might be scalable and um, uh, item potent and traceable and all this. <coughs> yeah. Who can review this? Who can version this? No one. It's, uh, uh, as we, if this noise was so loud, I couldn't hear, so I just texted back. Um, uh, GitHub pull request this was just a short text message, and then they can run it, and you continue your vacation. If this was click ops, I don't know. Then you have to do videos of click this tab and this tab and this tab, and <coughs> also a you don't want click ups for uh, having vacation, and uh, b uh, the even more important thing is. How do you review this? Um, so I have so far and got pretty far with this. I insist on even this data pipeline designing thing. Everything must be code. So everything. So others can review. I make mistakes all the time. So I'm happy that I have colleagues who can have a look at it. And how can I share then the screenshots of those click tools? This is like a sharing Excel sheet review. Can you check my formulas? So some have, uh, some tools store XMLs. Uh, who can code review XML? This is also, <coughs> no, so code, and this belongs to me for uh, to scalable <laughs> as well. What's next? Resilient. This is quite sweet, because also when I started, yeah, you write your nice uh, things. And uh, normally, I, I don't do premature optimization. I uh, call those things by hand to see what happens. And uh, then I think always of failures, oh, yeah, and don't lose data, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but things always go wrong. Things do go wrong. Uh, in the beginning, it's not you. So you have done everything fine, but yeah, all any data, if you hand, uh, handle data integration or data analysis, comes from somewhere. And uh, those things have bugs all the time, or they just made it better. Because uh, often you just implement a, a workaround and hack to fix something that is in the dirt. And um, <coughs> <laughs> so it will always be wrong. So design uh, for failure. Uh, your own, and not in the sense and, uh, I was, okay, rolling back and rerun all this again is one thing that you enjoy one, two or three times, and then you're so tired. Because uh, the more data pipelines and functions you have, if you have to restore all this stuff all the time, oh my God. So try uh, to do things in a way that they're self-healing. This is the only nice way. <coughs> like it's relaxing when I uh, got there. So, oh, blah, blah, sorry, we didn't send enough events, or they're all wrong, and blah. I don't care. Wait, tomorrow morning it's all good. This is not easy, but it's definitely worth it to go home in time. And uh, if things go wrong, so no problem. It's uh, self healing. 
Most of all, a huge point I want to make, it must be understandable. Because uh, you understand it maybe today, in two years you also don't understand anymore what uh, you've done uh, on GitHub. But um, A, it's very difficult for uh, humans to perceive <coughs> complex systems if they're running at all the same time. And B, humans, and this is what I call organizational scaling, uh, come and leave and teams change and, and leave and uh, they don't know that uh, what you have been working on all, all this uh, time. So for organizational scaling, to try to make it understandable and often um, I do as stupid as possible. It's really stupid, stupid, stupid. Yesterday Trent uh, uh, said, um, constrain yourself to the simple. And this is Often not easy if you have the super duper solution. Said no, it's possible, but keep it simple, stupid. I always say make it so simple that even product owners can understand. Um, <coughs> that's a bit mean, but uh, actually it's super cool. If you, then you don't have to do the work anymore. If they just uh, uh, design some uh, flow charts, and flow chart it's just either things can run in parallel then they're on the same size, and this is a dependency. So this is yeah, the exchange rate per sale thing. And so this doesn't on, does only run if this block has completed, but we can pull uh, currencies and prices independent of each other. <coughs> and you can draw this, post it on whiteboards, excellent. And uh, you can talk to people about this and can uh, move things around. I highly recommend to keep things understandable. <coughs> there are solutions uh, that do this, um, and also quite nice and well. Airflow from Airbnb does all this task handling, highly recommendable. Luigi uh, from Spotify. Um, Yesterday we heard about the probably coming uh, Yamal from uh, <coughs> Blue Yonder. It's just one thing. All the stuff, if it's uh, scaling out, then they say, yeah, of course, it uh, runs on clusters. I don't want clusters. I just want to run some simple, stupid tasks. I don't want cluster management or all those Python 2 stuff, the, the salt, and, and it's not salt, the twisted libraries, and so why, why do I do, I don't need it. I just want those things to run. <coughs> and I also yeah, they said, yeah, but how do you do this? So I don't want clusters, and I don't want to maintain state. And if I uh, need to know, OK, this has worked, and this has worked not, uh, if I need to. Uh, keep track of what has been done and what not, then I either need to set up a cluster, so those huge extra system to watch what my data system does. And then if this gets more and more, and then maybe I need an extra system to watch what my uh, maintenance system does. I don't want uh, maintenance, I don't want clusters, I just want my tiny functions to run. And, yep, no cluster. Boom. And so there's this <laughs> amazing company, Amazon. They maintain a lot, and they have this uh, simple workflow. And they maintain state in the cloud, scaling horizontally. It's a pretty advanced uh, service, not used very much. Most people stick to queues as SQS or um, and even Kinesis, I think only because it's simpler to understand. Um, Philip and me try to, <coughs> or we are, uh, using a Python library, uh, using a simple workflow that takes a lot of the possibilities of simple workflow out to make it just super stupid. So I, 
This thing is conda installable as we have it running in production. We orchestrate our tasks, so exchange rate sales, report generation. Uh, with this, it's pretty alpha. I deployed the last version here, yeah, not a few seconds ago. Now it's how many? 25 minutes ago. Um, it's uh, <coughs> not a topic I want to talk about today, but uh, we use flow-based programming approach that we uh, separate decider from activity logic. And we just want to show you um, what this looks like if I find my mouse. How many minutes left? It should be. Okay, I wrote a small demo for today. It's just, uh, there's two, <coughs> three steps. There are, so first I um, get some, some random number, and just also to show that this is in no way time-based or whatever. So this is a, a random number x, and then I have all those tasks that can run in parallel. They sleep for x seconds, or I can input uh, parameters, as those boxes, they can have an input and an output, nothing else. And so this sleeps x times input value, b times uh, in x times uh, input value. And when all those are done, the same function uh, sleeps x times uh, input value. Sounds a bit, um, so now let's see. So. Where am I? So move over, over, over. Tap, tap. So let's just. I quit. So no more slides. <laughs> So I this drives me crazy. Let's see if this works. Yeah. This does not work. Good. Clear. So whatever we start, does this work? Yeah. So I start a worker. Yes, I try to. I have also debug mode on. Here I start, where am I? I start a decider. These are the two things. And now I need a workflow. I need a workflow. One more thing is that we have written all this stuff also. It's the code itself is Python, but all tasks, definitions, and uh, outputs, it's, yeah, here is the thing. Here it's a worker. <coughs> so it gets a four. So this is already done, had a short, it was, ah yeah, it was only sleeping for two times two uh, seconds. Decider terminate. We said that this de uh, decider is uh, um, done. Hang on. I want to, to really prove that uh, do you have your computer there? Yeah, you have. I'd like to kill this worker. Clear. Start I Python on a screen. When I, I mirror my. So. It's better. 
So I killed my worker. Uh, so let's run a decider. Start the workflow. Philip, could you set a worker, please, on your machine? <coughs> Good, so let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, here's a decider. Is scheduling activity tasks. I get, and now I closed my Chrome. Let's do more meetups about this, how it's, uh, yeah, but done. As this is really, you, this, this you just need to start uh, uh, a decider and uh, your worker functions wherever. It runs on your local machine, on EC2 uh, instances, but without clusters, without this. Uh, you just, simple work, you just tell to, yeah, start, go, from. The thing is on GitHub, pretty alpha, but uh, has a massive readme and we're working on it a lot. Don't use it at work yet, because uh, we know what we're doing and there's some timeout issues and you can easily make this sort of a uh, fail. Um, but I can recommend to have a look at it. Yep. What does it have to do with uh, Amazon workflow? We, we are using this. Also uh, Amazon, because um, here's just a decider and a worker and uh, the, the, the orchestration is done by simple workflow. Because <coughs> the uh, activity workers or the activity workers ask, simple workflow, do you have something to do? Do you have something to do? Do you have something to do? And then simple workflow says, here, look, this is what needs to be done, one task. And Amazon guarantees that no task will be executed twice. This is what you not want. Uh, that uh, the timeouts then send timeouts. And so a decider just said, have I something to decide? Have I something to decide? And the worker says, totally independent of the have I something to do? And by decoupling this logic and simple workflow just offers uh, uh, those event history stuff. Um, you don't need to maintain state and don't need clusters. Okay, so whoever has a question waits until he has the microphone or she. So that it's being recorded. So the first question was here. Uh, I've been using Luigi for quite a while. It really improved our productivity a lot. So I was wondering, like, um, if you had used some of the other tools that you mentioned, and then how did they compare? Like, why did you go for simple uh, other views, by the way? Yeah. Because I don't want to run a zero MQ or a salary cluster just to run my uh, tasks. And um, so the orchestration, if it's on one machine, that's all nice, but if you boot up several and, and, and then, then the cron jobs and, and all this, I just said, you can do it by Lambda. You don't even need a server at all anymore. If the first task is boot up a machine, then a machine is there, run this, uh, uh, put the machine down. I don't need to maintain. I go home in the evening, I have weekends, we all have bubble have this because we're trying to write serverless code. We don't have one sysadmin in the company because we don't want to sit there and see if things work. And this is just... So I would, if you just start with this, uh, this uh, airflow is uh, pretty nice, but when I think if I start from scratch anyway. Um, and then all this cluster management is much too much legacy Python. I think this must stop. And it's also another reason we think if I also contribute to this, uh, um, it has always worked and this is why we need stick to it uh, thing, uh, then I'm part of uh, this keeping this around. Accept it. At the most is I don't want to maintain state or clusters, and this is what you need to do, even with uh, Luigi and uh, even with uh, Airflow, if you uh, need more than one machine. There's a question at the front. 
Yeah, and thank you for the talk. But then if you don't want uh, like uh, um, server architecture or maintaining a cluster, why don't you choose like Lambda functions? And we, we are. This works with Lambda functions a okay, lot. Okay, so this is an orchestration for Lambda functions. No, it's not. On, you, know, you can boot up machines. You can boot up your mobile phone if your mobile phone does uh, mm -hmm. uh, want to do the work. All you need is, uh, okay, a Python uh, 3. We are on five, yeah. We started five, I think, mm -hmm. and also four, and and your AWS credentials. But uh, you can, of course, just integrate Lambda functions in your workflow. As is, for example, uh, booting those things up is really nice. A scheduled Lambda. If you want some every month, do this. You start a scheduled Lambda. The scheduled Lambda boots up as many instances as you uh, need. Mm -hmm. But this is a part of the workflow, mm -hmm. and then it uh, decides what to do. And then your workflow is next step. Mm -hmm. So I, here I would begin with uh, that your workflow starts with putting uh, the machines up. Or if the Lambda function can do it themselves, also fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, the activity workers in a simple workflow can be Lambda functions, which is super cool. Uh, but there are no deciders yet because this is also long polling. Lambda function is uh, five minutes currently, and this is often mm -hmm. really long stuff. But you can do lambdas with that, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's nice. Yeah. Okay, so we have time for one more question. Um, hi, great talk. I have one question uh, regarding uh, comparing it to Airflow. Um, it's really nice that in Airflow you have a web interface, and you can ex easily explain this to your product manager or whoever is uh, in the company in the morning before you and he can see, oh, this hasn't been run and he doesn't call you because he knows, okay, this is already handled by the system. So is there something comparable with AWS uh, or is there something? <coughs> yeah, I, I haven't shown this now, but I, I sh uh, show you after the talk. Also there is this uh, pretty ugly simple workflow in the console. You have the simple workflow interface where you see uh, what the workflow is, and you can even start workflows from there or kill them and uh, give parameters in. Um, it's a bit ugly, but works uh, well. So you could just do, if this uh, workflow execution failed, you see it in the console, uh, then start a new one with another parameter. Uh, so this exists. Since this also uses uh, just uh, graphics, so these are uh, directed graphs. Um, we could, or maybe we can convince someone to uh, visualize the graph, this is just pure Python, it's a simple directed graph, uh, should be no problem to uh, get the state. Because whenever they decide, uh, the pipeline decides what to do next, yeah, then we could also uh, visualize it somewhere. But this is, uh, yeah, it, it, we, we need it. But you can uh, see, and anyone can see who has the uh, IAM permissions. Okay, thank you very much for the nice talk.